Hey, welcome to EPS Paratalk. I'm Robert, and this is... It's been so long. Freddie, hey guys, how you doing? <laughs> how you doing, sir? I never you know, know how it's going to start out. You know, you know, I got to make it like mystery. <laughs> I'm sitting there going, all right, go ahead. How come on. This, how is this going to go? <laughs> well, two people jumped on. All right. Uh, welcome. Welcome aboard. You sharing out? I'm trying. Yeah, I'm waiting. All right. You can get a chance. Just go ahead and share a few out if you would. Appreciate it. Guys, just hang in there with us for a moment. We're just going to share out and get other people on. If you would, just go ahead and hit share. We'd appreciate it it's just the same. Let me get the comments. Bridget, thanks for being on. Anybody that jumps on, if you would, just say hey, just so we know that you're on with us. We'd love to give you a personal shout out. Freddie, how you doing today, buddy? Doing fantastic. How are you, sir? Doing well. Doing real well. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, you got the walkthrough of the new EPS area that we're going to be doing this in? You know, I, I love the new uh, EPS studio. we got a lot that to looks... do in here. And thanks for jumping on. Appreciate it. I love the fact that you got the jacuzzi tub over there, the, the hot tub over there. That's over there. And it just, oh, it is. The hot tub's up on oh, the outside. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't nothing in here, but it's right. Yeah. Anyway, we got a lot of work to do in here. When are you going to grab a brush and start? painting too. This is the EPS. This is where you're supposed to be dedicated to, you know. Right. True. I will uh, be glad to. Um, <laughs> Don, thanks for being on. Paint. Can't hear the how it's going to look, but I have no problem painting. Uh, new flooring, so it better be okay. <laughs> well, that might be. We had to discuss it. All right. That's the way to get out of painting. I appreciate that. Right. You're welcome. <laughs> what are we going to be talking about today? What's a couple of topics? Uh, ghost. All right. Spirit. That's, that's yeah, good. We're going to talk start. about the paranormal. No, we're going to talk about uh, shadow people. Shadow people. Shadow people. Yeah. Also, we're going to talk about something that really should be brought up more, and veterans and their what they see, what they have dealt with. Experiences, so, experiences. and then some of the unsaid, you know, mentality um, that they have to deal with as well. So we are going to talk I, about that. I too. know I do share a special day with Veterans Day. It's also Freddie Appreciation Day. So it's a uh, Freddie appreciation well. about your birthday. <laughs> You're welcome. But uh, and I was a day late on your birthday, fine. so I apologize it is, for that. It is all good. But anyhow, um, I work at the uh, VA personally, and I hear a lot of a lot of people come up and talk to me and, and tell me stuff they witnessed, and it's very interesting. So it was a good topic that you was going to talk about it today because it just it, you ended up with a really good Shay. Hey, thanks for jumping on, Shay. Hope you guys got your popcorn, your wine, anything else you need to have set aside and ready to go. Um, at least we're in the right category. we got all women on with us today. This is perfect. <laughs> I like this. Um, Hello, everyone. It was just it was ironic that I, I just had the drive to go ahead. Just it hit me as far as to put that post out about the, the vets and different people that have right. done that type of work. And, you and know, then you get these people that you've heard stories from. Right. And I and I've been there two years, actually two and a half years now. At my place of employment, and it, it, the more I work, the more people want to talk about talk about stuff because they know what I do. So right. before it was kind of like they didn't want to talk about anything. You know I mean, they kept it hush hush. Didn't want to say it. But a lot of actually a lot of police officers that are veterans that I work with have come forward and and told me a couple a couple things that happened to them, which I thought was really I don't know how interesting it would be because. You witness someone get killed, and then you see him the next day. Yeah, that's legit. It's got to be mind blowing for a lot yeah. of people, by far. And, and it does happen. Uh, the story. Go ahead and start, open up with the story that you were talking about from the vets that were <coughs> over in Europe. Was it over in Germany? Germany. Yeah. Um, they were actually one of our veterans. Uh, witnessed a, his squadron, one of his uh, two of his, uh, I guess, squad crew. I guess you want to call them, um, got killed right in front of them, and. They first they thought, well, it might be just a dream or a nightmare because, you know, they thought they saw him. Then they actually saw the two gentlemen that were killed the day before walked out by, by the wood line. And uh, they went to go like chase up to him. How many to went? How many were had witnessed this about like 14? I think you said 14, 13, 14. Wow. Quite a yeah. few witnessed these two guys walk down the wood line. And they're like, OK, we're. Are we all just seeing this or you know how can they how, how can i be how can all of them see the same the same thing and uh they went go catch up to them and when they went through the wood stuff they they couldn't find them anywhere you know but they said definitely it was actually the the two that they witnessed that got killed the day before so 
and you were saying that they were all talking about being absolutely 100% sure of sure. yeah. them too. Yeah, because how do you get 13, 14 people all witness the same thing? So, you know what I mean? That's quite... To me, that's pretty phenomenal. And, and again, it's there's so much in this field for us to go ahead and learn, and there's so many experiences, and people are finally, as you said, it, the more that people are starting to feel more like they can go ahead and let some of that information out or things that they've experienced and especially military. And that's, I brought it up about military, but there's other, certainly other roles, police departments and everything else where people can be in that situation. And the worst part from the worst part that I would imagine for most people is the taking of a life. And and that's one of the things I want to talk about for veterans day, because the longer we're in this field, the more people we talk, talk to, uh, especially veterans, um, that have seen action, been around action and to hear their stories. And a lot of them, it's not so much the stories as the torment that's behind them. And, and they hold a lot of, a lot of, a lot of memories in and they, they, they keep them bottled up and they just mm-hmm. turn around and look like they function like, and go along their day, like everything's perfectly fine. But yet inside, or if you talk to their family, it's very common that they're, they're, they tuck themselves away you know, at certain times of the evening or something, when they get home, a lot of times they'll just, they'll leave their family and go to another part of the house or go outside and just sit, you know, just to get away. And I, I find it extremely sad that they can't talk about it because of just like people with abilities. I mean, it's hard for you to talk about, to let it out. A for judgment. Number one is the judgment. You know, how is somebody going to judge them or look at them? You know, when our, when our veterans came back from Vietnam, they were I, they were treated so horribly. I mean, they were spit on, they were called baby killers and all kinds of nasty things. It was absolutely horrific. You know, here these people are putting their lives on the line. I don't care. And from what country, it doesn't matter. It's, it happens in all countries. They're asked to go to war. They might take somebody's life. But the more you talk to them, the, they're, the ghosts that they're waiting for are the ghosts of the victims that, you know, they've gotten into a battle with. And they're just waiting for these ghosts to come and get them and, in all reality. And these are, you know, men that have stared down the battle of, stared down the barrel of uh, a gun and whatnot has been in a firefights and whatnot. And yet that's the one thing that they are still haunted by. So you getting it? I'm trying. You're doing great, man. The, more I, back, the, the more I share, the more people we lose. <laughs> I, I don't know what the, what stop sharing or leave our, leave our five we have. But anyway, I want to say right from the get, if for some reason we do not see your comment, it's not on our side. Uh, there are times that if you have an issue like that, go out, come right back in. We are on the Things Network, so make sure you are coming in on the Things Network. If we're not seeing your comments, that will usually help because you're directly into our feed at that point. So we can make sure we're still dropping them off. Yeah, see, it's just uh, the more I share, the more the more we drop. Yeah, don't share anymore. <laughs> share anymore be down to one person. Uh, can we get a check from you guys? Now we got some people on. As far as just let us know if things are clear, pictures clear, you can hear is okay. Because, like, we right. stopped getting anything. <laughs> yeah, we got no comments. Shay, are you still there, sweetie? Just give us a thumbs up. Say hi, something. I did not check and see how long the delay is in between this right now, but we'll find out momentarily. Clear and yes on the hearing. So awesome. Shay's still with us and says, sounds good. Thank you, and Thank you very much as well. We appreciate that. All right. We're also going to be talking about shadow figures, shadow figures. Yes. We definitely want to talk about that today as yes. well. So we're going to go a little bit more back to. Yes, Shay, I definitely. I, I see you up there. <laughs> we see you. Thankfully. Yeah. So uh, and Shay, did both you guys come straight in on the things network as far as on that posting? Or did you go through where it was shared at out of curiosity? We're coming up now. I just want to make sure. There we go. Yeah, see? Yeah, don't share no more. <laughs> you. Y'all can. He can't. Donna, thanks so much. Uh, you, you're you talking also how people don't believe ones that have abilities. Yes, we do talk about that also, Donna. Uh, that's pretty much a regular that we talk about quite a bit. And we'll, we'll discuss that more. Uh, so stick in here with us. Ann came through on things. That's good. I just want to make sure. Ann shared. Thank you so much thank again you, for sharing. You. We definitely appreciate that. The, the worst part you can have, going to, to Donna as far as what she was talking about with uh, people not believing, it, it's got to be extremely hard. Somebody's sharing, 
for things actually doing it. Thank you so much for that. Chantel, thanks for being on. <clears throat> Hello. Um, it, it's got to be extreme. I went in where you had the reminder. Gotcha. Yeah, so Donna, definitely, uh, I wish you were on right now as far as when I had Janie's great. Uh, she's also my other co-host that I'll have with me quite often. Uh, she actually, I moved her and her husband in with me. They're team members and we're, we're all together now. So we're a lot closer. Freddie is not that far away. Freddie and Melody is not very far. So it makes it easier um, for people that have abilities. That's got to be one of the most crushing blows, especially if it's a significant other, because that happens. But take it a step farther because some of the calls we get, our team, unlike a lot of other teams is we treat locations. And so somebody could be having an issue at a location and sometimes it's children. And the, the worst part is, you know, it's very com a very common is for an adult to say, there's no such thing. No, no, no. There's nothing really happening in your room. It's just your imagination. And as that child, you know, it's happening, you know, and I, I get, yeah, <laughs> children can have no different than adults have an imagination. But there you go. That's for you. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be back. I know I took a, a vacation um, with work. Um, actually, working is my vacation, apparently. So anymore, <laughs> it seems that way since uh, nobody wants to work. So, <laughs> but I'm back. But thank you, guys. So, for anybody, especially if you have abilities, if you do, whether you're a child or an adult, to have the abilities to be able to see, sense, or feel something, and those around you to kind of look like you're crazy, you know, look at you as though you have lost your mind. Yeah, I'll, I'll go over that in just a moment, Sheila. I'm going to go back to the soldiers in just a second. Um, but I, I just talking about abilities for a moment, we've had plenty of clients and that's a hard part where a client significant other doesn't believe in that particular person's ability. We have people that will usually like we go to an investigation, we're doing a live, which we're looking at possibly doing a live next Saturday, which would be cool. Uh, <laughs> checking here, <laughs> finding out you got your message. Um, when we go live, we're, we're very open. It's interactive as well. So if you have questions you want us to ask, we'll ask all those questions as long as they're reasonable. If you have abilities and you can sense something there, you might be able to sense that there's a particular child there or something that's going on. So it's really, really cool that if you guys give us those comments, we can target that. We are going to be live next Saturday on an investigation. Awesome. Uh, Donna says, yes, this woman took over my bedroom. No one believes. I also have a soldier. Now on that, saying the same thing, Donna, because you'll find out from me when, one thing in particular is I'm very, very open and, you know, whether people like it or not, it doesn't, I, I'm not really, I'm not worried about whether or not the mass is like, and I'm just going to say it as I, I feel it and see it. We do have people that will claim to have all kinds of abilities as well. Unfortunately, they give people a really bad, that have abilities of bad name because they're just trying to get the attention from it, if that makes sense. I'm not saying you're one of them, so don't, don't go there, please. But we do have plenty of people in the field that say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm a medium, I'm a psychic, I'm blah, blah, X, Y, Z. And I, I hate when they try to read me or something because, yeah, I, I haven't found too much. There are plenty of them that have abilities. It's the ones that are very modest about it are the ones that I prefer to hang around because, like I said, someone will just text us off to the side and just say, hey, I'm picking up on this. And it's great. We appreciate it. Uh, going back to the soldiers, a lot of times soldiers are waiting for whatever happened before. I am right above. I'm not sure what I missed out on. Oh, if you, that you're a sensitive or medium or healer that's that's perfectly fine titles not really big into i love the fact with people that have abilities so let me just be very very clear right. about that part um going back to the soldiers though uh, one of the things that come up when we're talking to some people and again it's 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 like opening a can with a toothpick i mean they, people don't like to talk about the the horrible right. actions that they may have taken in the past but it comes around and it's usually once they've been drinking and they finally lighten up a little bit and they're like uh when are they coming? You know, it's like, when are who coming? The people, you know, the, the ghosts of the people that, you know, I might have shot in the past or whatever, or, or done something to or whatever. And again, these are people that have been defending countries, you know, that are asking this question. They're very, very 
serious about it by far. It's, it's not a joke to them at all. And they're waiting for the ghosts of, of the people they have eliminated to be coming to them as though and they're really thinking this ghost or these ghosts are going to come after them. And that's not the case at all. I mean, once you get to the other side, the whole point of the other side is you, fortunately, you have a much greater sense of the overall picture. You know, yeah, are we supposed to be taking lives? My belief, no. Does it happen? It's happened since the day of time. PTSD, absolutely. It's, it's an absolute part of PTSD, Donna. Hey, Amber. Um, it, it's definitely a driving part, but it's a part that doesn't get discussed. And where do people go to find out information? You know, if you're a soldier and you have this and this is a, a, a serious, you know, you can go to your shrink. To, what does your shrink know? How much value are you going to put into what your shrink is telling you? And I'm not saying that the don't listen to, you know, a doctor that, that's. And speaking of PTSD, we I've actually encountered a couple guys not too long ago. I, don't, I haven't told you yet, but I had to take my sticker off my windshield, the ghost hunter sticker off my windshield, because I would have people come in and want to talk to me while, while I'm working. And I can't, unfortunately, I can't have that. But they tell other people, hey, there, there's a guy, the ghost hunter that works, work, works here. He's out here in dispatch, you know, go down and talk to him. And and they would, they come up. And I'm like, look, I'm sorry, I can't talk right now. I'm in the middle of work. But, you know, I give them a card, you know, tell them, call me afterwards or like that. But it's them just wanting to come out and, and talk to you about stuff. Or I guess reassuring them that they're okay because, you know, they, they, they do have PTSD and they do want to like, and anybody can have anybody can have PTSD if they go through a traumatic experience. And in that also a lot of people for their religious beliefs, you know, the idea of doing something to somebody else that's horrific of right. taking a life or anything like that can cause them some incredible grief. And it, it's no different than you guys. You know, seriously, you go to a doctor, doctor tells you blah, 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 X, Y, Z, and you go, OK. And you listen to part of it, do you honestly want to listen to everything? And not always do you. It's kind of like your best friend turning around telling you, hey, that guy or that girl, whatever, you know, you, you ought to stay away from them or they're not, they're just trouble, but you're going to date them anyway because you know you've got it in your mind. You don't really listen to your best friend who really probably knows what they're talking about. A lot of times that's the same thing for somebody who's in a clinical situation where the doctor's saying, hey, look, you know, this is a, a traumatic experience and this is why they're still looking for a little bit of some other reinsurance from a different level. We're a different level. We're not saying that we override any medical professional at all. Uh, Bridget, part of the problem with combat related PTSD in men and men in general is in many cases, men were raised to believe that talking about their feelings is wrong. And you are absolutely right. dead right. Dead right, Bridget. Um, you know, we still right that is the that is a man's different that's a serious difference between a man and a woman and it's not it's no different than saying okay you're a man you're not allowed to cry a woman can cry that's absolutely retarded um you know i'm not saying cry about everything for god's sakes but you know come on you know you have to let things out and the problem is we got to a point in society where we want to be so tight knit about everything we want to hold it in right. or we want to go to the opposite extreme and cry about everything and not have right. to be held accountable for our actions right. and we need to have the responsibility whoever's hitting me on snapchat thank you very much but i can't answer you right now <laughs> i started that back up finally so okay. um love having you guys on thank you so much for being on but again it's there's a lot of topics that are not discussed it's no different than children children hold a very very sincere right. uh, part for our team because we will jump quite often when there's a child involved I know how it is for adults going back to what Donna was talking about with people abilities. I've seen how Janie, again, she's our team medium. I know how she was treated. I know at one point there's certain things she couldn't talk to certain people about, you know, even family members. They were like, no, don't talk about it. Um, down in the Bible Belt area, if you have abilities, you know, you can be shunned away from your own church, which is absolutely horrible. I, I, I can't imagine right. having that. Yep. Um, but Oh, Robin just jumped in. Hey, Thanks for jumping in, Robin. So take it to another step. If it's that bad for an adult, how bad is it for a child that has abilities? Right. But, you know, and, and, you know, we deal with kids all the time, you know, when it comes to like, you know, and we really enjoy that. I mean, we really yes. you know, find that interesting because 
my strong belief is, you know, the kids talk about imaginary friends, you know, so yeah, I don't think they're imaginary. I think they're actually seeing someone. They're just trying to, you know what I mean? That's because they're more open than anybody. And it's just them trying to. There's definitely a difference when a child is sitting in and let's take a little girl and she's got her little tea set out and she's going, oh, do you want to have some? This, that and the other. There, That's a different interaction than when you actually hear them going, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. But I, but I don't want to. Right. And you're watching the expression on there. They're looking at somebody. They're talk, it's, it's a it's a conversation going on that they're hearing. That's not the typical imaginary friend. And as a parent, you know, if you don't just burst right in and if you start trying to pay attention, you'll you'll be able to separate the two. And that's what we're talking about. We're not talking about those that just want to have we used to, uh, playing with matchbox cars. I remember when I was little, you know, we used to drive matchbox cars all over the place and whatever. That's your imagination. That, that's fine. But when they're having that, you hear one side of an obvious conversation. That's something more to look at. Donna said, my daughter had an imaginary friend. I asked her what she looked like and I wanted to like and I wanted to die. Why, why was that? Uh, was it just that descriptive of details out of curiosity, Donna? I love the interaction. Thank you right. so much. And again, all of you guys, we appreciate but it's it like so the, much. The, the young kid we had at the, Wayne, at the Amma squad when I worked there, he sat on the couch. He was just looking down the hallway. He was like, hi, you know, come on in. And whoever it was, was like, they came over and sat right next to him. He's like, hi, you know, hi, and laughing and giggling. And I'm just like, what, what are you looking at? You know, just before I really got, you know, me involved. And there was, there was multiple adults Mul sitting in there. Yeah. We're all he was in his own areas. little conversation yep. with. And then about two minutes later, he panted that this person gets up and leaves. He's like, bye. And walks down the other hallway. And I'm just like, who are you? Okay. What do you look like? You know, what, you know, trying to get, and then be it. But to really to see that, you know, them actually talking and their facial expressions. Like, yeah, that's, it's a whole different. It is most definitely. Um, said very scary, red eyes. Uh, Rob said ghost children only let certain people see them. Uh, what did Amber have? Amber had, we just did an emergency case on one of our neighbors. Her two-year-old daughter is a sweet little girl and so smart. She in detail was describing what things I what things look like. She was getting pushed around also. Wow. And I appreciate that. They're kind of paranormal. Uh, again, up in New York, fantastic team. Yep. We love working with them. They're great friends of ours. And you get these calls that are just, you know, out of nowhere and you jump. You, you're right. looking to try to help them out as best you can. And that's very, very important. Um, Donna uh, also being having uh, gifts and whatnot, which tends to be more predominant on the female side from their children as well. So it's not uncommon for that to happen. Uh, I know just going with some of the people that I've talked to that have abilities, also making sure that when spirits or ghosts come to you, making sure you, you start stating, hey, you know, I don't want to see you in your death state. I don't want to I want I only I only want to see things that look good. I don't want to see bad things. Not all things know how they're presenting themselves. And even with things that sound in, to Donna's perfect point, you know, as an uh, any normal person, when you start hearing red eyes, you start hearing, you know, the details looking descriptive, sounding horrible. You can get that. But it's a matter of what your reaction is, is how the child is really going to have the reaction from it. That's a big deal that that also gets missed too often. You know, if if in Amber's case, if her uh, well, two year old, you know, she's the two year old is going to definitely be watching the, the parents at that point. And if the parents are really getting all in front of the child the child's not going to get a good vibe from it. I mean, children are smart. They do pick up on that in a big way. Yeah. That I, I absolutely believe in. Uh, I know, again, I have some people, even I know somebody on here right now in particular, uh, during Veterans Day and around holidays, she actually has vets um, that are on the other side, you know, people who have passed spirits that come to her. And it, it's almost like just an acknowledgement they're not mean. They're not nasty. Nothing like that. Again, it's they've got the big picture. They understand what they now have a better concept of what it is and that they're not being um, judged by the actions that they were had to take. Let's put it that way. And it's just kind of almost like, a, you know, th that person has been in the military, was in the military, and these people can come from different 
to come through, you know, and just it's like a passing and just saying, hey, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's fantastic. So to the point, as far as going back with that, it's not, um, you know, the ghosts, the spirits, they, they, they're not they're not coming to be mean after somebody. Theo, what's going on, buddy? Um, Donna, I'm Native American heritage. There's uh, we have a lot. And again, a lot of people mistake quite a bit what's going on. But people that are Native Americans, obviously, are the most in touch with their spirits, right? With the other side. I really, truly believe when you if you were to put everybody, you know, all the different uh, backgrounds together when it comes to I would definitely go with the Native Americans being the most tied in. Uh, Absolutely. And that's that's around here. I know I don't some of the islands. It's, it's they're very tied in, you know, with, with different types of spirits activity. Yeah, Theo, that seems to be the uh, routine for some of us is working a lot. <laughs> uh, also want to talk about shadow people because a lot of yeah. kids also see shadow people and a lot of adults. And again, all this wonderful online stuff, you know, it's it's amazing how quick people can jump to how horrible it is because you've got a you've got a, a black figure. It's all black. The face is all black um, and they're they're creeping around the house. Have you ever heard that before? I've heard that. Oh, yeah. Many, many times. So, yeah, it's it's not uncommon, extremely common. But speaking of shadow people, okay, what's your what's your take on on, on shadow people? My take is straightforward. My take on shadow people is they are not negative. Uh, I, I hear so much that there's so much written that you know they're black figures. They're all black. They have no no description about them, and they're all absolutely horrible. A lot of times we come through shadow people in more cases where somebody in the house has abilities or somebody's going through a change. And a shadow person is basically an observer. A shadow person will, and you'll outright see them. I mean, they'll be on the edge of a wall and they might stand up and they'll be mm -hmm. kind of doing this looking out. They're, they can be, they'll bend down, you know, they'll be hunched down. They're not, they're not like jumping around a corner trying to scare you, but they do look over you quite a bit. Someone else has abilities. I'm getting a bad headache. Got to learn to push that away then if you have a problem with that. And yeah, you do have people on here with abilities. One in particular is really good. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can put you got you have to learn to cut that and push it, um, which is something you can absolutely do. Anytime you feel it, you just acknowledge you feel it and then push it away. She's picking up something. Her right. head hurts. Feel free. Feel free to uh, share. Yeah. Uh, but shadow people in general. What was your take on shadow people? That's my thing. I think they're just uh, curious, just observers. You know, and they might even be even trying to get your attention for something. So nothing bad, just get attention because uh, I currently work with uh, work with somebody that that's been having some some history with some issues with a black figure standing in the corner of the room, and she, to the point where she gets really scared and really does doesn't want it there and basically says leave, 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 leave. But I I tried to explain to her that it may be there for a reason. You know, either looking over you, looking over her, her daughter, you know, the, the, the little girl, you know, and a lot of times they will. A lot of times, you know, the, the, the shadow people are there to help you. And, you know, I witnessed a couple, a couple not witnessed, but heard a couple times where an actual baby was, uh, was choking and the mom didn't hear it. And she woke up to the shadow person and said, well, maybe I ought to go check on my, on my daughter and come find out she's choking. So I think. I think in a sense of way, they're, they're there to try to watch, watch over you, try to help you out, try to get through to you uh, somehow. But we're going to go to a couple of questions yeah. before we lose them. Um, what if it's a black mask, no legs, arms, face? What would you consider that? A blob. That is not a shadow person <laughs> we're talking about. Just just be on the same page with everybody. Right. We do have an elementals can come in a form of a mist or a mass and it can change shapes. Uh, there are some negativity that can absolutely change shapes. And I'm not saying it's all negative that can change shapes. It's more likely that it's going to be something. And when I say negative, I'm not saying oh, demons and I got you. You know, I'm going to stop. Slow down. That's the biggest problem where everybody makes. Slow down. We have seen black masses. I have stood in a mass where I've had multiple people on my team. 
I'm only 10 or 12 feet away and they're swearing up and down that they can't see me. I'm always going towards something like that. Right. Um, Donna, take a minute. Unfortunately, you were asking how to, to push away. It's an empathic connection that you're having right now. Anytime, anybody, and Thea, we'll get to you in just a moment. Uh, just remember what Thea okay. is. Okay. For anybody who has abilities, there's the, one of the strongest part of your ability. The first part that you actually go through is being an empath. Empath means you can feel and sense things, things from the past and things from the living, even things that you're tied into now. There's no such thing as distance. So even people that are on here right now, you're basically around. OK, look at a bigger picture. Don't be thinking the way our minds are. We've been told to think, think outside of it. If Donna, if you were with me right now, what would happen is if I get somebody who's very pumped up like that, I'm going to hit you sporadically with water. You're not even going to know where it's coming from, or I'm going to clap really loud. Sorry. <laughs> In the dark, it works a lot better. <laughs> what you're doing is you have an empathic connection to some somebody or something that's going on. You have to cut that. Think of it as your subconscious always spinning and protecting you. And then all of a sudden it gets locked in on this other person that you're around. And now you're you're you you're feeling everything they're feeling if they're upset. And this happens to a lot more people than they actually realize by simply stopping that or focusing. I don't care if you focus on a bright light, something that's going to really pull your attention. OK, you can actually stop that from happening. You acknowledge, OK, this is happening and then you stop it. If you have a partner with you, it's a lot easier. That's why I, I feel really bad for those that don't have their significant other doesn't support them. Theo, uh, go back to Theo's. Yeah, go ahead. Theo had a question. Is it normal for spirits to attack someone because the spirit feels threatened? It, it's typically when a spirit is, it, it's not, spirits can attack. There's no question about it. We know some can, not all of them. All of them don't know how to make a sound, doesn't make, know how to make a disembodied whistle or make something move. Some do, some don't. And it doesn't mean, Bill's on there. Hey, Bill. It doesn't mean it's because that that spirit is so got so much power. That's a that's a myth. Sorry, burst your bubbles. And this is just my opinion, and you can tell me I'm wrong. That's perfectly fine. Um, what happens though, as far as if if I take a medium into a location with me, uh, if I take a medium into a location with me, and it's something really negative, that negative doesn't want me to know its game plan, so it will attack the medium because the medium's going to start telling me what's going on. It doesn't typically doesn't like that. If it's a spirit that's looking for help, really doubtful it's going to attack you. But what kind of attack are you actually having? Donna, right now, you're watching her go through where she suddenly feels this. A lot of people with abilities are going to call that an attack. It's not an attack. You know, scratches are not always an attack either. And that's, a, again, a big misconception that happens on that. Slow down. Uh, Donna, if you need to cut out for a few minutes, please definitely come back. But if you need to, seriously, if you if you think that would make a difference for you, jump off and come back on in a couple of minutes after you, you've had time to just relax for a moment. It's perfectly fine. It, a lot of times. Yes, Robin. It, a lot of times they're just trying to get your attention because in my in my old house, you know, I had five kids. We always had all the other kids around. You can move stuff all day long in my house. I wouldn't have noticed it, quite honestly. I really wouldn't. You, know, you come home, last thing I'm worried about is where anything's at. I'm not OCD like that. I'm not knocking anybody that is. But all of a sudden, if a sound comes out, a certain sound, I, I'll pay more attention to that. I'm just giving my own, you know, you have kids that move things all the time. But when you hear a particular sound, all of a sudden, it's like, who was that? Mm -hmm. It gets your attention. Once again, everybody on the other side, all ghosts, spirits or anything on the other side, they can't all whistle. They can't all move things. Good deal, Donna. That's cool. Had a spirit choke me. I always go into a coughing fit when a negative spirit is around me. I, I've heard people say it's supposed to be your weaknesses, what they're going for, Theo. I honestly don't believe that. It's it. If it's your way of association, once it gets to that point where there's something associating with you, it doesn't even have to be a bad spirit that's doing that to you. It could be your spirit guide, somebody who's around you. And that's the way that you've learned to pick up on when there's something else around you is all of a sudden it's kind of putting pressure where you feel like you're being choked. You, you, a little bit, you got to have a little more information than that though. I can't tell you enough as far as what's going on. And 
I'm a huge believer that you're on the physical side. If you really, when you get it up here that you're stronger than anything, I don't care if it's demonic or not. I don't care. I really don't. Once you understand that you're on the physical side, then you have more power than anything that is there. So I always stress that knowledge is power because it, it truly is. Right. Wow, Bill, buddy. Glad, glad to have you. Glad to see you back on. Uh, we haven't been doing this for quite a while. And matter of fact, this is the first time I've had Freddie on. This is our first year. show. First show it's been, year it's been quite a while. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, to Robin's point, again, you know, people, you do need to go ahead and have. You have to work on that. That's something you have to work on. People will say never show fear. It's impossible. And it doesn't matter what you show. It's a vibration. It's an energy that you put out. And you can you can see it if, if you go to one of our God, I, I love this part. I, and I'd love like to take some of these guys on some of the uh, ghost hunting shows. I like to take them to some of the really active locations that we've gone to and put a heartbeat monitor on them or, or, or something or a blood pressure cup on them. Because if you could actually watch these guys can act and we've had football players, we've had wrestlers that, you know, big old wrestlers that would come out, big burly guys, <clears throat> you know, all hawking and everything. And when you actually you can see the fear rip across them. And that is to me, it's funny as hell. We've, we've had some pretty good humor by it because it doesn't matter how hard they try not to be fearful. They are. And it, it, they, they eventually they fall apart. Not all of them, but they try to hold it in. We've had team members that would you have again, you, you watch the personality of the and of the individual and you, you'll notice when or how to tell when somebody's very nervous. And that can be very I could get somebody compromised really, really quick. No, that's perfect, Donna. That's that works. You know, again, if you need to separate yourself, separate your connection. Perfect. Um, and it will. When, when we're talking about shadow shadow figures or any kind of figure, if if you number one is when we wake up, where you turn around, you're waking up on your bed, you're like, oh, and you turn around and look. That's hard and for me as an investigator. I'm going, eh, I'm not saying it's your imagination. At the same time, you're not 100 percent awake. Right. It is when we're more vulnerable and we're more likely to be in the same frequency of something on the other side or someone on the other side. So it, it's kind of hard. It's when you have the repetition of something happening or when things other. Other things compound other types of activity compound that that's a little bit more. Anybody that sees uh, an obvious um, a mist, a dark mist or a shadow, and we're not we're not talking about just something in your peripheral uh, like Amber was talking about the mist. When when we actually have something where you're like, whoa, you look at it straight on and you can see this thing move around or you can see the person kind of dipping from the side of a doorway. It's very ner it's very normal for somebody to be very nervous or even scared at first. But there's a different there's difference in being scared and uncomfortable to being absolutely frightened out of your mind. Does that make sense? I mean, there is two worlds of difference on that. And that's the difference of learning that most people don't. They just categorize everything as either something evil or just not there. Does Theo have? Theo said I had a spirit attack me on an investigation at the Waldorf Hotel and was in a room and was told that there was a male spirit that felt threatened by me because of my size. So apparently he didn't want me there. So I started coughing and I felt like hands around my throat squeezing. I couldn't breathe and had to leave the location. The spirit evidently has probably done that before as well. When I go to a location, um, if we're going to deal with something and again, sometimes we're invading somebody else's place. Donna, don't ever apologize. You're, you're perfectly fine. Yeah. Don't ever apologize. You're, you're, you're perfectly fine. Um, if you're going into a, into a place, and we do this all the time, we have it in our mind, this is our world, this is where we're at, this is our room, this is my room we're in, this is my house that we're in. But what if the person that was lived here before passed away and this was their happy place and this is where they're residing? They're not going anywhere. They're not looking to move forward. They're, I don't care what anybody's religious beliefs are. They're here. Let's just pretend, okay? Bear with me. They're here. Now I come walking in. Who's the stranger or who's the trespasser? You know, so maybe that person wants me out. Uh, getting back to Theo, Theo, what happens typically is if you're on an investigation and 
somebody or something or a spirit wants people out of that area, they'll turn around and well, Bill, I like that. They'll turn around and go for the largest person in the room. Mm -hmm. Freddie will be attacked before most of the other people around him will be attacked. Uh, it's Janie and Freddie. Freddie is the biggest guy on our team. So if he comes in there, he's most likely. And think of it. If you can get the biggest guy scared, what's going to probably happen to the rest of the people in the room? They're probably going to yeah, leave. Yeah, it's gonna be uh, same thing for fighting. If I take out the biggest guy, I won't. Don't worry. Not anymore. If I take out the biggest guy, the rest of them are, are, are not going to be an issue. They're going to back off because they're like, oh, never mind. You just took the biggest guy out. <coughs> so often we've gone to locations that have had issues and it's not hard to look. I mean, they don't want to hear it. People don't want to hear it. We had a camera guy. He, he was an awesome cameraman. He was very, very knowledgeable, younger guy. And I, he was a big guy and he had big guns, you know, big old. I was like, all right, you're going to be attacked, but it's going to be OK. Don't, and he was losing his mind. And it's like I wasn't trying to plant the seed. I wanted him to know he's going to be OK. It's not a big deal. He was the one that was attacked. I mean, that's just a simple example of what we see and we've done so many times. Um, while Bill talking about and again, we're talking about religion and uh, wearing his white collar. So as a religious symbol in that case you are going to be attacked more again right. when you have negativity and that negativity does definitely resents, you know, somebody who's positive in a religious way, then they are. I have wore, I have a priest outfit that I keep on the side that I will wear from time to time. If I'm going into a very, very bad location and I don't want my team members attacked, I'm trying to get the focus on me. It's not to downgrade anybody's religion or anything. Again, I'm just trying to get them to focus towards me. Um, Theo, you know, I would definitely think that for the most part, it's definitely somebody trying to go ahead and intimidate at that point, you know, so definitely appreciate, again, I appreciate the, uh, the, uh, feedback investigators are the trespassers. And I, I sincerely agree that that's a lot of times it's no different. You, you watch the shows and when you watch these shows that are trying to be so realistic about everything and they, they replay it, it's after they start remodeling the house or doing something with the house then the activity picks up. And that's why, you know, whenever we go into a place, you know, we go in with respect. We, we go in and ask permission. We, we go in and, you know, introduce ourselves. That, that's who, who we are. A lot of people don't do that. A lot of people just go in and they just try to provoke and so yeah. So, yeah, you're going to have stuff happen to you. But if you go in with the, like, you know, being respectful and ask permission. And we and we have seen that. We, we have gotten more responses. Yeah with being respectful and introducing ourselves and just common conversation, just, you know, I have back and forth or whoever else is there, just not even talking to them. And then they will interact more than we will just by asking them or some, you know, a question themselves. Just. And we're even talking about the most negative location that you, if you've seen it on a movie, it, it can definitely happen just about, I mean, besides the spooky mu music at the same time, that really doesn't happen, obviously. Um, that would be kind of cool, though. No, well, I never had. I never thought about that. I never had music <laughs> played. <think>, uh, um, <laughs> but even when we go into a very, very negative location, and yeah, be, besides things being thrown across, I'm talking about people being pushed down, people being pulled by their hair, whatever. Even when we go into those locations, we start out with the same. It's the same way. We're we're starting out with respect. We're saying, look, you know, we're trying to communicate with you. We want to talk. We want to know what's going on. You know, why? Why are you doing this? Whatever. At least we're starting with that, even in those situations. I mean, they, it can get a little bit more, but you have to be very careful because that's when things can really go south in a big way. So it, respect is huge. <clears throat> I, I absolutely agree with you, Freddie. Speaking a little bit of um, on that topic, the um, the haunted house that I work at in October, um, we do an event all month of October. The house doesn't get used any other time of the year, just that one month. Um Almost all the actors, some been there over the years. They know some of the stuff that happened. You know, they, they actually had experiences, you know, whatnot. But this year has been the most active I've, I've ever seen this place. And we've been there multiple times. Um, but it's just, you know, they come up to me and ask me, well, why is it so active? Why is this, why is there so much happening right now? Because right now you're in their space. You, we are making all kinds of noises. We are screaming. We are, you know, banging stuff around. You know, we are being very disrespectful in a way. You've had people with abilities that have said they don't right. like what you're doing. 
Right. Doesn't like so. You know, it, you know, we are, you know, we, we, we work on the house. We, we do it all year round. Well, not year round, but every year we, we do it. We're still in their spot. That's their little comfort zone. That's where they feel, you know, they're, they're, they're safe at and we're in there making all this noise and stuff. So yeah, they were making themselves known. I mean, this, this past, this last month, but people are like, well, I don't know why it's so much because we're in, in their spite, you know, we're in their space. So Yeah. I never had a personal problem down there, anything bad. It's just that they will make themselves known, and they and they and they will do they will do stuff. And we're hoping again this Saturday we're looking to go live, and that's going to be what we're actually talking about going live at is the KOA campground. It's a phenomenal place. So if you're able, if you're able to watch, just be, just be be advised that it is a haunted house. It is an attraction, but everything is is turned off. So we do have props. We do have like air machines. So yeah, so you may hear some you know occasionally from the air bleeding off whatever but it shouldn't have that problem because everything should be already bled out we say what it is if we right. know what's going on we, we let you know what's going right. on so. but it's one of the only it, it's a haunted house it's truly a haunted house right. that's why it was actually used as a haunted house because the owner was like yeah no i don't yeah i'm not comfortable in this house and most people are not comfortable in that house right. and this is my like 14th year being 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 there doing it this is probably my last year of acting so I just my body can't take it anymore. So and plus work just takes take a lot out of me. But uh, but think about it in this sense because we're everybody's so about the negative and everything. Their characters are chasing and scaring the hell out of people. It, it's not just that they're invading and they're making noise. You don't think that some of these spirits are trying to be like you know don't be chasing that person. You know again they're trying to still even protect the living and that does happen. It, it, we we see things in our own perspectives too far too we have often. had several actors this past year get scared themselves because whatever was there was making themselves you know, move and stuff and slamming doors that shouldn't be slammed you know what i mean it just it, it does it really does happen so it's amazing I, I i love this place i'm looking really really i'm definitely looking forward to it i've got one or two people brenda thanks for jumping hey, on brenda uh i've got one or two people that i'm gonna see if i can get them to come out with us uh, to participate. Uh, I love this, this location. Yeah, it's great. The EVPs that we have gotten, even during videos, live videos. The, right. The only bad thing is, is it's always cold. It's crazy. Cold. And, I, and, and I don't get it, but um, it is very, it is very cold there. It could be 40 degrees outside, outside and it's colder in the house than it is outside. Like it, it, it's so, it's so wild, but it's, it's an awesome place. Uh, Donna, if you watch the screen, uh, it's the easiest place to find us. It's Elite Paranormal Society is our team. And again, we've got we've got a little bit more time still to go. Ah, Caitlin. Oh, Caitlin. Hey, girl. Man, that's been a long time since hearing, hearing her. Um, Elite Paranormal Society, we are now based out of Falling Waters. We were uh, Keatysville. We will be shooting the live straight to our page. So if you want to check us out and hang out with us, there is a lot of videos. There's a lot of information videos on our page. If you go up to the top and look at videos or look at posts, we have a lot of posts for people with abilities. Uh, if you don't have abilities, you kind of want to have a better understanding of abilities for people that feel like they've been haunted, for people that feel like they have ghosts in their house. We have a lot of different posts about any of that, as well as a lot of absolute uh, evidence that I'll stand behind in a heartbeat. I know it was. What did Che have? I'll send you a bottle of whiskey to give <laughs> to the drunk upstairs. <laughs> to the drunk upstairs. Yep, she knows. She knows who that is. Bill says I would love to be on that investigation at the haunted house. Bill, I, we'll get you to come up sometime because you, you you'd yeah. have a blast there. Uh, the owners of the property are phenomenal. Uh, we've got our youngest investigator that ever investigated with us mm -hmm. is actually she's been raised at that location, right. so she's more comfortable than most adults are. Uh, does fantastic there. Caitlin was very young when she was there as well. Uh, that was one of the first places she had been to. Incredible. Definitely enjoy that, that location. But for some reason, it doesn't matter if it's summertime. It's not like the basement is underground. There is a side of a hill to one side. But the basement is not underground. But even in the summertime, most people wear jackets or coats in there because it's so cold. <clears throat> that is very, very true. Yeah. Uh, we have... The most, we had four different team members. They were all females. They weren't all team members. Uh, one or two were guests. But even at one point, we had four different people with us actually 
get taken out during the investigation one year when we did have something going on there. And this year has been ac actually a lot worse in activity during the haunted house part. Caitlin said, yeah, super cold. Yeah. She remembers. Yeah, she knows. <laughs> Um, we'll be starting our live more than likely about eight o'clock. We'll probably start the live. Don't be doing that now. I still be in bed by then. But, uh, take my nap. But, oh, yeah. well, I'll be started waiting on you to get there. Okay. No, I'm looking forward to it. I, yeah. I jump at the chance to go KOA. I love the place. It's got, you, we never know what we're going to catch. And when, you know, we wanted to try to do it, but last first week in November, I, after the, the haunted house closed down, because it was just so much stuff going on. So just be curious to get back in and see what happens. So it'll probably be eight o'clock. I'll put a post out on our page. Again, if you go to www.facebook.com slash elite, E-L-I-T-E-P-A-R-A-S-O-C, elite Parasoc, uh, you'll be able to easily find us as right here on Facebook. That's what we do most of our uh, investigations when we go to our page where we push most of them out on eventually we would definitely want to do youtube as well that'd be helpful uh anytime we're here you're more than welcome to go ahead and again post your comments we love to network with people we enjoy it we're not saying that we know everything we're just telling you from our experience we're just giving you it, our experience didn't come from just simply books or what we heard it comes from actually being in the field and spending a lot of time in the field We've done uh, sleepovers at very negative locations just to see what type of reaction would happen. Uh, we, we've done all kinds. We've done some blindfold tests. We've done, we'll try pretty much anything that's within reason. Uh, we have our, we have certain standards that we go by. And again, whenever we're doing this, we, we're always trying to help people. Um, we make mistakes. We make plenty of mistakes and we'll always make mistakes. Um, unfortunately, it's, part of my nature. I'm a Murphy. What do you want? Um, <laughs> but if we can help you guys not make the same mistake, if you're going to go out and investigate, that's the idea. If we can help you get, have a better chance of catching evidence, how does that not help the entire field? So it does only make sense to be trying to go ahead and do what we can to help anybody else. And again, we're always learning from our peers in the field as well. Bill, I do plan on a visit with your team. When I come up, I'll bring my clergy wear. I like to wear my uh, cossack. Okay. Um, Bill, absolutely would love to have you up here. It'd be, it'd be incredibly a fun time. It's not uncommon for us to have a pretty good residential case going on at any time. <laughs> we, we have a lot of residential cases that we're constantly working on. And for anybody that is part of one of the residential cases, especially now, right now, while we're still in the transformation of the house and between the different jobs, I have been absolutely horrible. And I apologize if I have not done a wonderful job as far as keeping or not organized. But for I don't I don't chase anybody. I finally I figured that out. I didn't know what the name of that was, Alfan, uh, what it actually <laughs> meant. But I was kind of guessing at that one. Thank you, Bill. I appreciate that. Um, I personally don't chase people to help. Yeah, so if somebody asks for information, I give them the information. If they don't follow back up, I'm not going to sit there and bug them. If I we go to a location and I treat that location, I will follow up with them for a certain time, if that makes sense. Well, and, and that's um, if, if you know, I've been on a couple with you. If you go to treat somewhere, treat a location, you know, you spend all that time doing that, you know, and then just trying to open stuff back up again. Oh, yes. That's ish. <laughs> I, just, I just don't understand some. You know, just, you know, you do all that and then you tell them don't, don't invite and then they turn around and they invite and then they got problems again. So. People, when we go to a location, we're going to treat a location. One of the things we say is, hey, look, quit watching the paranormal shows or the haunted stuff for two weeks and don't investigate your own house anymore. Don't play the recorder. Don't start asking all your questions. And what we found is it's happened a few times where everything will be completely dead for several months. And then they call and they panic, freaking out. And they're going, oh, my God, you know, we, we turn around. We just did a spirit box session or we had a recorder out and we caught this voice. You know, I can play it for you. We got a really creepy voice. And then they went about like a yeah, issue again. That's so, called an invite. You have right. just opened your front door and said, hey, come on in. Anybody here? Come on, talk to us. That's an invite. We don't go back a second time. You're on your own at that point. And it sounds mean, but it's just we only have a limited amount of time. So 
Just be just be advised. Shadow persons. So ultimately, shadow persons are they mostly horrible, bad, demonic, nasty, evil entities? I just think they're neutral, just uh, observers, just there to watch. Yeah, just. The cases we've had a couple of cases. One was even wasn't even a toddler. The it was a very young child. Uh, it was a male child, and the amount of reports from the roommates and the the mother of the child about the shadow people. It was the more dramatic that we've had about shadow persons, even those with red eyes. So again, slow down before you start jumping to investigation with red eyes. Um, some of them were reported to have red eyes. I've personally seen red eyes. I've seen green eyes. I've seen yellow eyes. Pretty bizarre. Pretty cool. Um, they were not evil. There was nothing bad there. And it was all about the energy that was coming off that child. And I've had that at, at multiple locations where we've had children with, with crazy energy and even other people besides just our own team medium, other people would be like, wow, there's somebody that they would even know that there was a child in the house that has it. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Try, try not, definitely don't suggest you, unless you are really looking to have uh, some possible interaction, don't investigate your own home. And most people are not ready to hear a voice and uh, assume that a deep voice is a bad voice. Get out. You know, you're going to be thinking it's a bad voice. It doesn't mean there's anybody bad there. Uh, speaking of, you know, inviting some, we, we had one of our um, older females at the, the haunted house that didn't believe in any, any of this stuff. And that's fine. That, that, that's Absolutely. Your, but you go in and you say, okay, well, if it's truly you, then I want you to do something to me. Yes. And then she hasn't been back since because she won't go, she won't step foot in that house because yeah. she left her with, with some, with some scratches and stuff. So she, I'm not saying they can't scratch you. I'm just saying that every right. scratch is not on right. purpose right. or right. to actually harm you. But to instigate would basically, you know, try to revoke and, and she got her she got her answer and uh, she won't come back working out. But you know what? You that's all you. You you should have done that. It's like well, we know seasoned investigators, people right. that go out in the field and they're just like, Well, I've never had a bad thing, and they'll do it and then they'll finally reach out and be like, uh, we got something bad going on here. And, and they could be absolutely good friends of ours or not. I mean, it, again, it's up to you to believe what you want to believe. I was like, um, Bill said, you know, deep voice saying, get out. It could be my voice if I'm there. You know, speaking of get out, you know, we get a lot of get out, you know, get out. And people are like, oh, my, oh, I can't believe you said that. You know, I have to leave. I have to move out. No, it's basically, you know, you think about it. If I walked in my grandma's house, you know, like I used to have to take my shoes off at the front door. I would have to stay for that. If I walk in her, her place and, you know, I'm invading her, her spot, she's probably going to tell me to get out. I'm going to tell anybody to get out. And so, you know, it, it's not always bad or, or negative thing. It's just, look, you're in, you're in their territory. So you, you know, so you're their space. But yeah. Shay. Shay has, uh, have you ever gone on a site where you are intercepted by a guardian, a spirit that is there to protect the spirits within, or is there such a thing? Your experience? This is, this is very casual. And so when I'm asking him, I'm asking for his honest opinion He's not right. going to say something that just matches mine. We we disagree about things, and it's okay for anybody in this field to disagree with somebody else. I think we all have our, our guys and, and you know guardian angel. I think you know people watch over me, uh, they're, and they're probably going like this on the uh, King's you know, <laughs> doing. But you know, I've been I've been in places where I, I felt different. Where I walk in and like, okay, I'm ready to do it. And then I get told like in my head, like, hey, you know, watch, just be careful, just watch what you do. And I think it's somebody that's you know telling me that. So. I've to a point. Shay, uh, just to, as far as to be a little, I've come across gatekeepers before. What we term as what we believe to be a gatekeeper, whereas we could have activity and we know we have spirit interaction, and all of a sudden everything goes dead quiet, and a very clear voice will come across and just be, "You're done," and whatever you're talking about, and give a name and everything, you're done. Doesn't want us interacting with them. Speaking of that, the. Um what Shay just said, um, the haunted house this past year, a couple of guys that work on it went in and they would set, turn things on, get things ready for that night, you know, to run. Um, walked in, they said they had to smell the rotten, rotten flesh, right? You know, a really nasty smell. And uh, a little while later, we had the perfume smell. Remember, okay. we yep. gave samples of that. We had this mysterious, I never smelled the perfume before my life, but this was a really different lady perfumish smell. 
And it was funny because, well, well funny to me, but wherever that's the rotten flesh smell was, was being traced by this perfume stuff. And it basically let it like right out of the basement and like out. So like almost like something was trying to push the negative out, or trying to push the bad out. In a lot of locations that we go to, it, well, let me just say in all the locations we go to when we're dealing with residential, when there's something extremely nasty there, there is positive energies there. Mm -hmm. They are they are very positive trying to do what they can to try to keep as much of the negative energy at bay. In certain situations, we have come across, just to elaborate a little bit more on Shay's question, we have had energies, spirits, whatever you want to call them, people on the other side actually held in a location by something that's negative. Um, we've had, yeah, I, I gotcha. <laughs> um, we've had spirits in, or again, whatever you want to call them, they, they were actually held in that location. They were actually pulled from like a closed cemetery or wherever else they were held there. And in some of those cases, we've done a crossing as far as to get rid, get them to cross over. So they didn't have to remain there or, and again, your belief system is up to you. You can say, yeah, this guy's absolutely full of it. It doesn't matter what, how you feel about it. It doesn't matter to me. It matters to the homeowner and even those on the other side. That's our number one. So once you can separate yourself from that and not worry about so much what the public thinks of whether or not you're talking the truth or not, you'll know when you actually do it. Um, there's a few of you guys that have done a crossing before and you, there is no doubt in your mind when you actually can free somebody up from a location. It's, it's a great feeling. Were you going to say something? I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, I so. While Bill said found such a spirit, but I wouldn't call it guardian, but more of head of household. Again, I, I get that by far. Um, so it, it, it's neat because people want to know, hey, if there's multiple spirits in a house, can they actually be on the same? Can they interact with one another? And oftentimes that is the case. We've had elementals and elemental is an energy vortex, basically, basically cycling, trying to get all kinds of energy. It doesn't matter if it's from us on our side living or those on the other side. It's just trying to absorb and everything moves away from those. They don't want to be around them. Uh, so it doesn't matter if it's a friendly spirit, if it's a nasty spirit, if an elemental comes in, they move away as well. So there's, there's always seems to be a higher pecking order somewhere out there. Great question though. We're going to get ready to go ahead and jump off here. You got anything else? No, I think Any shout outs? Are you good? It's good to be back. Good to be back. Yes, it, um, it was. Gilson's done uh, done a uh, passing as well. Uh, he was a team member that we had on. We've had a couple of different team members that have worked really, really well to do a, a passing. Oh, Zira, man. Hey, Zira. We're getting ready to jump off, but darn, I'm glad to see your name jump back up on there. That's great. It, it's so incredible when you go through something like that. It's amazing. Uh, Donna, my belief is the living have guardian angels, not spirits. Uh, why wouldn't they be stuck? Why would Why would they be stuck? Um, Gina, thanks for jumping on by all means. This is great. Uh, real quick, uh, Donna, as far as some energies being stuck, energies can be stuck for multiple reasons. Those that commit suicide, they don't have their, to, and this is my belief, my opinion only. If they don't have their escort to the other side, where do they go? What do they do? How do they know where to go? How do they know what to do? So let's just say in one sense, as far as the suicides, uh, some people have messages they want to get on to loved ones or something that is not finished, not complete. They have something else they need to do and they, they will stick around for it. Your loved ones can easily go ahead and uh, jump over and be transitional. Even after they cross over, it doesn't mean they can't come check on you. Uh, several of you guys have had that phantom smell where you know they're around, that cigar, that uh, pipe smoke, whatever, something out of the blue. Well, I'm glad you caught us there in all sincerity. It was great to have you on. Gina, again, same thing. We're jumping off here. Uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to go ahead and hit us back up. There you go. Wild Bill. Some don't understand how to cross over. Sandy. Hey, Sandy. Um, so if you have any other questions, please, please feel free to go ahead and, and hit our page up. You can see it right here on the screen as far as where to go for Elite Paranormal Society. We absolutely enjoyed having you guys on with us today. Thank you again so much. I uh, hope you guys will share. And remember, next Saturday, we will go live on investigation. That would be great. We're out of here. Talk to you. See you guys.